30 days of mourning. Mm -hmm. When someone passes away in our family, it's hard. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we have a service. We have maybe a week of, uh, and, and, and a month maybe. But they actually mourned for a month. It was, it was big to them, mm -hmm. for Moses. And, mm -hmm. and when, after the mourning for Moses, uh, if you just think what it would be like for that, maybe a million people. Okay, here we are. Who's going to lead us? <laughs> I wonder if Joshua was kind of hiding in the corner of his tent. <laughs> I don't know. I think Dell would have been. <laughs> uh, uh, in reading this chapter, I kind of noticed that it's like Joshua had seen God do some great miracles. He'd seen Moses lead. And now he's seeing the people wondering what's going to happen. So it was a bit of a transition for them as, as a people. And uh, Joshua 1, verse 1 and 2. I'm going to read it. And uh, I'd like to look at that with you. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore, arise from over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving them, the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. What happened when Moses had a meeting with God, something like this? He was saying, oh, I don't, I don't have, you know, I can't talk. Um, I'm not the guy for the job. Mm -hmm. um, it, it just, if you think about it, Think about leading a million people. A million. I mean, roughly. 600,000 men were counted. I can't imagine. I mean, they didn't have, you know, the sound system. You know, they had, they didn't have cell phones. I mean, cell phones would have been cool, huh? Everybody had their cell phones, send a text to the whole group. Okay, guys, load up. We're crossing the river tomorrow. No. There was, there was no radio. No television. How do you communicate with all that mass of people? I'm sure they had a system, but just think about it. How do you make a decision that's going to affect all of them? We're talking going into battle. And it's, it's amazing to me when I think about it. Joshua, I, I often thought of Joshua as being someone like me. You know, young, you know, in the prime of life, you know, ready to go to battle. Okay, well maybe that was 20 years ago. <laughs> um, some of you were more, more like that, I think. Um, I always thought that. But if you think about Joshua, okay, he went in with the original group of spies into, into Canaan. And then for 40 years they were in the desert? Yeah. Okay, at least 40. <laughs> Did they send the little child in to be a spy? I really doubt it. He's at least, say, 60, maybe 70. He lived till he was 110. Mm. Well, we're looking at, at one of us here, you know, <laughs> of, of our age maybe, or well, more. But uh, if, if we stop to think about it, Joshua wasn't just a young buck. You know, ready to go out and conquer the world. He was, he was someone more at the age of what we would look at as retirement. And God said to him, you are going to bring my people into the land, as I promised them. And Joshua, we don't see a, a, his, his reaction. You know, sometimes when, when we get offered a job, you know, we have funny reactions. I'm always kind of scared a little bit when someone says, Oh, yeah, I can do that. Especially in church. Uh, it's like, I'm able. And I stop, and I think just a little bit, Okay, you, you think you're able, but where is God in this? And then someone else will say, Oh, no, I can't do that. Not at all. You know, and I'm thinking, Well, is, can God help you do it? You know, are we able? Um, Yes, with God. Well, Joshua, just we don't see any of his, his hesitation. It, simply, he obeyed. Mm -hmm. And that we don't see everything that went, went into his thought process and everything. But, but with Joshua, 
It just, you're going to do it? And he started taking steps to be the leader that called of God. I think it's important for all of us, if we look down in verse 5, um, where we read something that, I, I read it earlier this summer, and it, it just uh, jumped out at me, where God said to him, No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. I heard someone say those words this morning, talking about the Truth Project. Interesting, huh? I almost wish I could stay and join in with you. But that was God's promise to Joshua. I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. I will be with you like I was with Moses. And as I think of Joshua, you know, faced with the million people and the big job of getting them into the promised land and being the leader, um, I see that maybe one of the encouragements for him was his promise. Joshua, he saw how it was with Moses. I will be with you too. I won't forsake you. You can count on me. What an amazing promise. It's true for us too. It's true for each one of us who are believers. What do we read in the New Testament? Jesus said in John 14, and I'm going to turn there, John 14 and verse 16, talking to his disciples, he said, I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper or another Sorry. <laughs> Another uh, counselor. Uh, counselor. Okay. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, the Greek word is paraclete, one called alongside of us to help us. So that, as, we, as, as Pastor Fred mentioned about this afternoon, people feel alone. We can count on God's presence mm -hmm. with us. Mm -hmm. wow. The comforter. That God has given us the Holy Spirit, God Himself, in our lives. First uh, Corinthians six nineteen talks about our body being a temple for the Holy Spirit. That God lives in us. So if we go back to Joshua, Joshua had that presence of God with him also. What an encouragement! What a blessing! Um, sometimes I think about it and I think, wow, if God is really with us, if He really lives in our heart, if He's really here this morning, how come we're not doing a Saul of Tarsus and falling on the ground? Really? Now, okay, we're not heading to Damascus to, to persecute believers like He was. Um, but it's true. What an effect this could have in our lives. I think we all, you know, maybe some of you have been believers for many, many years, longer than me. Some of you maybe not. But for each one of us, we can grow and we can see God in a more clearer way in our lives, day by day. And what a blessing it can be, what a help to know that huh, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. I can count on God. Mm -hmm. There was a missionary back in the day, I think it was the 1800s, whose name uh, might ring a bell with some of you. His name was John Payton. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was uh, from Europe, um, maybe Scotland, I'm not sure. <coughs> Went with his wife and daughter to uh, what I think is New Hebrides in the, in the Pacific, served there as a missionary, sharing the gospel, the simple gospel of Christ. God loved the world. Christ died on the cross to pay for our sins. He took our place. And he worked with the, with the people there who were much more what you might typically think of as uh, natives, uh, aboriginal ministry of like what we were going to do in Indonesia. I mean, people, where we were going, people had stone axes still. 
they used them. And, um, and they were developed, their cultures were developed, but they, some of the things that they used were, were, were primitive in a way. But he went and, and worked with these people, communicated the gospel. Um, his wife passed away, and he buried her there. His daughter passed away. Again, he stayed alone. He was the only one. And there were all kinds of plots and, and violence and wars and fighting and stealing and so on. And he stayed. And there was one time when he had to leave because of this war that was going on. And he had to trust one man who told him, go up in this tree and I'll come back and get you. Hmm. And he thought, okay, am I doing the right thing here? Is this wise? But he didn't have any choice, so he went up in the tree, and all night long in the dark, I mean, you, some of you may have been in the woods, uh, in the forest at night, you know it's very dark if there's no moon. Well, he was, he was up in this, he was up a tree. <laughs> he heard people running back and forth down below him, he's thinking, okay, when are they going to get me? Shooting guns, you know, all kinds of, of violence going on, and they were fighting between themselves, while the missionary was up in the tree. And at that point, he said there was something that he realized, and it was just the presence of God that was so much with him, and he was so much aware of it. He said it was like a peaceful time for him. And down below, all this craziness was going on, but he was having a wonderful time up in the tree. And he said those years, what helped to, him to keep his sanity and all, the, all of what was going on was the fact that he was aware of God's presence with him. He wasn't, he wasn't alone. God was with him. Sometimes we may feel alone. Um, I'm involved with a, a student group at uh, the CIGEP uh, for uh, Vieux Montréal in Montreal and uh, discovered that last semester uh, one guy went through a really hard time of depression and feeling like he was, he was alone. And he says, I didn't really talk about it. But he says, it was really terrible. And when he started talking, there was a girl started, you know, talking to and sharing how last, it was so hard for her. And it was one after the other, feeling alone, mm. feeling like, uh, one shared that in high school uh, the boys kind of persecuted her, or a group of boys, you know. And it was like, it's so hard for them. Mm -hmm. I thought, yeah. And God is with us, even in those hard times. When we lose someone, God is with us. God is with us. I think that one of the things that we can do for each other is to pray. Mm -hmm. Often you can think, yeah, pray for Pastor Fred. Or pray for the missionaries in Asia. Or pray for ministries here and there. But we can pray for each other. Mm -hmm. and, and I think of Joshua. He did, God helped him do some pretty marvelous things. Mm -hmm. But God was with him. And I think that we can pray for one another that God's presence would be more and more real to us. No matter where we are in our Christian life, on our, our road in life, we can pray for each other that God would be real. His presence would be even more real to us. Day by day. What a blessing that can be to us. He said, God said, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you or forsake you. Now there's a couple other things in Joshua chapter 1 that I see like resources. And they're just going to be going to be real quick. And uh, I'm encouraged as I look at Joshua, probably the one verse that many of you would just think of right away, Joshua chapter 1, would be, So is there a verse that comes to mind? Verse 6. 
Verse 6. Yeah. Okay. Be strong and of good courage. How about verse 8? Okay. Verse 8. This book of the law shall, and this is God speaking to Joshua. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Mm. Okay, we're not thinking, uh, I was in a Haitian church, uh, and there was a, a man and an older uh, woman sitting on the side, and I didn't know it, I, maybe, maybe his mother, and um, as we came and I read this verse, she goes like this to him, <laughs> and he goes, huh? And she goes, <laughs> so I'm thinking, she's thinking, you know, he's got problems, you know, if he would just read the Bible, then everything would be okay. Uh, we're not saying, read the Bible and you'll, you'll win the lottery. No. We're not saying, read the Bible and you'll be rich, or, or you'll get a job. But it will make a difference in our lives when you put it into practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I read this, and I, I think... Okay, it's, it doesn't mean either that we're just walking around mumbling all the time, even though that's kind of what the word meditate means, murmur, to keep repeating. And uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's a, a key for us in our, in our life with God to be able to take the Bible and to think on it and to kind of turn over the things we're learning. And you think, okay, what does that mean in my life? What does it mean? Okay, Joshua, he had this promise, but what does it mean in my life to practice the presence of God? And to think, okay, where I am, he's with me. Um, I'm working on a roof, he's with me. I'm driving and stuck in traffic, it's not just me. Uh, I'm in school in class or I'm teaching. Uh, God is with us. Maybe we don't know what what's kind of job we're going to get. Uh, but God is with us. God is with us. How to put that into practice in our life with the Word. And I think of just a couple of things. One, one thing that's really important, and for many of you I know this is like, you know, we learned that you know years ago. Uh, but just a little reminder, okay, that uh, I, an alone time with God is kind of a key in our Christian life. Time alone with the Lord. And with the Word, yes, and praying, yes, uh, listening, uh, seeking His guidance, seeking His help, thanking Him, worshiping Him. A time alone. Uh, it's great to be together and to open God's Word and study it. It's great to do uh, uh, special projects, like the, the Truth Project that, that Pastor Fred mentioned. But individually, it's important for us uh, to be able to open the Word and, or at least listen to it. We have friends who can't read. They don't know how to read, and it's no problem. They can, they can hear it. They can hear a recording of God's Word, or they, we can talk about it with them. Um, uh, other friends of ours are have their doctorate, and they're way up, you know, at university, and, and so on. And them too, they can read the Word. So I think it's important for us to have time alone with God, but to study the Bible at our level. Um, you know, we, we, need to, we need to take what God has given us, I think, and, and and, and seek to open the Word of God and put it into practice in our lives in our own, with the, with the resources that God has given us. And if someone has, has, has gone to university and has a doctorate, he's going to read it a little bit differently than, than me. Or, or someone who's just learning to read. Um, what a blessing that we have the Bible in so many lang in so many uh, uh, versions and translations. And uh, I, I mentioned this in our French church. And one, you know, I mentioned a couple of translations. And one guy holds up his uh, his telephone, and that's what he's following the message on. You know, 
okay, he's beyond me, you know. <laughs> uh, but what a resource we have. God's revelation, God's communication, his book. Joshua, uh, you know Joshua only had like the first little bit, the first couple of books. The Word of God in our lives, but there's another resource too that I think of when I read here. It's at the end of the chapter, in verse uh, Joshua uh, 1 and verse uh, 17 and 18, 16, 17, and 18. And the story is that uh, there were some of the Israelites that wanted to stay on the other side of the Jordan. And so they had their land there. But they made a promise that they were going to go with the rest of the people to get set up in the promised land. And so they said to Joshua that they were going to follow him. And this, this is what they said. So he answered and said, All that you command us, we will do. Wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we needed Moses in all things, so we will need you. Only the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. So I see, I see like not only God's presence must have been a big encouragement to Joshua, but God's word also. And here I see God's people saying to him, Joshua, don't worry, we're with you. Um, and I think that that's a picture for all of us. And I think all of us, we have a little bit of Joshua in us. We could put our own name there, Joshua. God is with us. <coughs> yeah, Joshua, I need to, I need to put your word into practice. I need to read it. Mm -hmm. Help me. Mm -hmm. And not only that, but we need to be there for for those that are our leaders, those that need help, going through a rough time. You know that I can count on the people around me. My, my brothers and sisters, my family, my spiritual family. So, I think those three things can be an encouragement to us. From Joshua. From 1400 years before Bethlehem. Wow. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for these words from Joshua. I pray that you would help us as we, as we consider how we can practice your presence in a greater way in our own lives. Help us as we open your word to uh, understand you better and to put into practice the, the principles and the lessons that you show us. And thank you, Lord, for those around us that can uh, be a part of our team, that can encourage us and support us and, and uh, uh, speak your truth into our hearts. Thank you, Lord, for this day that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.